Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. As we uh, we have Jeshi Ji with us again today, and last time we had discussed what is Pitta, Vata, and Kapha. Um, properties of Pitta, Vata, and Kapha, the most famous um, known doshas for Ayurveda. And today we're going to be continuing discussing about what are the imbalances of these. Um, doshas and what we, the herbs we can take to balance them as well. So welcome, Jashriji. Namaste. Lovely to see you. Lovely to be here. And thank you for this lovely invitation to continue our introduction to Ayurveda series for the YouTube. And yes, we have discussed a little bit about the properties of Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Uh, which represent the five elements in dominance, although each of them represents all five elements of ether, air, fire, water, and earth. Still, Vata is richer in air and ether factors. So that means the properties of Vata are that uh, Vata expresses as dryness, lightness, airiness, uh, subtlety, and therefore diseases of these uh, characteristics will manifest such as osteoporosis, forgetfulness, more space, you see, joint problems. So joints can be uh, having more space dislocated. So that is what a problem. Then we saw also that Pitta has the properties of hotness, um, lightness, it is also light, it also has levity and moves upward uh, to disperse and spread. Uh, so hot quality, penetrating quality. So Pitta people are very smart and they can overuse their mind and eyes. Eyes are governed by fire element. Uh, so then uh, Pitta is also uh, very much involved in eruption diseases such as acne, which would be worse in summer generally. Then uh, there'll be infections. So the whole world is involved in infectious factor right now. Then there's heat stroke as well. We're in a, a season where we've recently had a number of deaths related to overheating of the brain. And we also discussed before about kapha dosha and its characteristics because kapha is mostly water element and earth element. Then it can express as a diabetes, it can express as overweight, even tumor, any enlargement, swelling, water retention, which again is more in hot weather. Mm -hmm. So again, now the diseases of kapha will be uh, expressed through its elements. And that's how we choose the remedies as well. That's how we choose the antidotes. So let's say the person has had uh, osteoporosis, maybe a dementia diagnosis, maybe a, a pre-osteoporotic change, or for example, maybe they're uh, just exhausting, overworking, overwhelming then naturally lifestyle has to be considered, not just herbs, because herbs cannot do what rest will do. So rest is very, very critical for Vata to just lay still, uh, lay in a corpse pose, which is just facing up on your mat, mm -hmm. as if you're going to have a yoga nidra, put a pillow under the knees and do deep breathing into the all three levels of the lungs, lower, middle, and upper, and exhale that three-part breath as well, silently. And truly many, many small vata problems will repair in that rest. Then the person feels refreshed and can go on with the next task. Now, if the person is facing pitta disturbances as is now, because this is the heat wave. <laughs> so naturally heat is increased externally and therefore internally. So truly this is not the time to make the marriage decision because people can be uh, uh, disturbed in their mental channels by pitta and have too much opinionated factor, too much, um, you know, I must be right in this argument 
etc. So they have to think about pacifying pitta in the pitta channels. Uh, the main pitta site, of course, is the small intestine. So pitta qualities build up within the small intestine. Then if it is too much, it overflows into the general circulation and now it will affect all the channels. So whatever channels are weak in the person, perhaps the vision, uh, perhaps the spine in the case of vata person or joints. And for kava person, upper fundus of the stomach uh, and heart. So these are the regions that are subject to kava disturbances. So we have to think about lifestyle to reduce congestive cardiac failure, say, or in the case of pitta, the inflammatory cardiac uh, disease, or in the case of vata, the spasmodic type of cardiac disease. Uh, so we have to see not only the properties of the person, their prakriti, but also the properties and characteristics of the disease, the vikriti, how they merge together and how vikriti, the current imbalance, can be restored back to the prakriti, the balance. So for that, we use mostly lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Get up early, have food on time, suitable food, have it ready, soft, mm -hmm. uh, oily in the case of water pacifying, uh, cooling and bitter in the case of pitta pacifying and very bitter and astringent in the case of pas kapha pacifying. So food program has to be there, early bedtime for everyone. Though kava can manage with the least amount of sleep, but vata needs early sleep, prolonged sleep, if they can manage. Many times sleeplessness is part of their suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, then pitta person can also have sleeplessness, awake at midnight, thinking, thinking, carousel thoughts, <laughs> churning, burning. Uh, then kapha is generally not plagued by sleeplessness. Wonderful. Wonderful. So um, besides the lifestyle, um, of course, the lifestyle you had mentioned, like yoga poses and, you know, sleep and resting. Oh, are we, do, can we have some herbs named that if someone is feeling that they are having these difficulties, they can take um, yes. to help with these? Okay. So yes, each individual has their unique uh, herbal needs, but in general for vata dosha, for vata elevation, for uh, times when it's difficult to get hold of vata and help it to come back to its site of the colon, uh, we could use dashamula, 10 root tea, mm -hmm. make a nice tea, one cup in the afternoon. We could use ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is heating. It's a testosterone precursor. So it has certain limited roots, but it is a, a root. Therefore, it's grounding to vata. And it is one of the 10 roots in the ashwagandha, in the uh, dashamula blend. Okay. So it can be helpful. Any root uh, generally will be helping to vata. So just make a, a light tea or a stronger tea if you have symptoms and uh, stop your work at three o'clock, four o'clock, vata time of day, and mm -hmm. just quietly sip that tea, calm yourself, your mind, come to the present, and then start to think about pitta and kapha. So for pitta elevation, dosha pratanya, it means the main plant that we would use uh, uh, to pacify pitta, guduchi, guduchi oh. is uh, tina spora, cordifolia, mm -hmm. and it happens to reduce pitta in all datus, all tissue levels. So very, very useful herb and commonly available as well. It's not expensive. Mm -hmm. Now in the Western plants, there will be any cooling plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any cooling plants, any of the um, peppermint or uh, for example, chamomile, or uh, because a little bit bitter as well, sweet and bitter and cooling. So those substances in whatever region you live, those are the pitta pacifying uh, herbs. And we might think about shatavri as well, asparagus racemosus, uh, which is helpful for uh, certain types of estrogen deficiency because it is a, an estrogen precursor. Mm -hmm. And shatavri, the 
uh, it takes a lot longer to grow. It's a, a slow growing plant, uh, but it's very sweet, nourishing and uh, pacifying to Pitta. So it's a, one of the Doja Britannic for Pitta, one of the main herbs against Pitta. And then for Kapha, uh, because Kapha diseases involve excess, typically now we want to reduce, so we want all um, catabolic herbs, such as Punarnava. Punarnava is Boharavia diffusa. Mm -hmm. It is a primary rejuvenative. It has affinity for the kidneys and the water carrying channels. So it does help to support adrenal function mm -hmm. uh, and to some degree thyroid function indirectly. Uh, but we have shilajit as well for pitta, which is a mineral pitch. It's not an herb or a single herb. Mm -hmm. It's a mineral pitch exuding from rocks in the Him Himalayas, which is dried and compounded with gutki. And that helps to regulate thyroid gland. It helps to repair the gastric membrane and um, microbiome. And uh, neem also is well known for pacifying pitta. So it's very excellent in the case of high blood sugar or fluctuating blood sugar or excess sweating or enlarged liver or any of the diseases that are associated with excess kapha. Okay, thank you. And these can be taken, and uh, do you prefer that these take, be taken in a tea or like, for example, there are other methods like there's tinctures, powders, capsules, right? and even in tea. So what would be the best uh, method of taking these to get the benefits? You know, fresh is always best. So if you can have the fresh juice, that's the best, the most potent. However, that is not our good fortune living here. Right. Except <laughs> when we're harvesting our own local plants. And uh, next is the dried whole plant reconstituted mm -hmm. as tea, keep the dregs in the tea and swallow those as well. A similar method is to have the powdered plant, put it on the tongue, have the warm water ready and swallow it like a pill, then it mm -hmm. will assimilate well. Uh, then um, tincture, for example, uh, some do like that method of preserving for winter. Uh, it is not as strong as the direct plant on the tongue. Mm -hmm. Then the fluid extract, much the same. Uh, so if you can get the whole plant in whole, uh, whole form, that would be the, the, the top, the best. In capsules now, if you miss the taste on the tongue, then whole shadrasa, whole connection with the six tastes on the tongue is lost, bypassed. Mm -hmm. so either it is a gel cap, which is... Uh, gelatin, so mm -hmm. may not be vegetarian, mm -hmm. or a veggie cap, uh, which is a little thinner, but nonetheless still have to be broken down mm -hmm. by your gastric system. So we do find that people have burping after the uh, capsule, encapsulated. So tablet can be taken as well. So tablet may or may not require fillers by the country of origin. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yes, just uh, really be careful, watch your labels and buy from a known supplier. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Ashwiji. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. I hope you guys all enjoyed this informative session and we will be back with more with Ashwiji. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste.